All right, let's talk about one of the Jaguars' first-round picks from a year ago, Devin Lloyd, a guy who I loved coming out of college and showed some real flashes as a rookie, but maybe not consistently. Let's talk about our expectations for him, what actually happened, and maybe where we can go from there. So first, let's look at his pro football focus grades, and I didn't really remember this from uh, last year, but he really was kind of a one-year wonder uh, coming out of college in Utah, where a 90.3 grade is very good. Now, I should mention, at the linebacker position, uh, PFF grades don't do as good of a job at uh, predicting the future as it does in other positions, such as like you know offensive and defensive linemen and things like that. But still, I mean, an 82.2 grade is in 2020 is still pretty good, but again, look at the snap count only 343 snaps that year so that's definitely you know in five games yes he was still good but not as good as he was in 2021 and it was a small sample size and the year before he had a sub 70 grade which usually that won't even get you drafted so definitely a one-year wonder type player and what's also interesting is that if you look at the uh you know the comparables so this is where you know in specific uh, categories where he ranked uh you know among other college players uh, other other college linebackers his what's interesting is his pass rush grade was actually the best thing about him an 88.4 pass rush grade and I want to be very clear part of what makes this so impressive is he wouldn't just you know blitz which you would expect for a high pass rush grade for a linebacker he would legitimately just line up as an edge rusher and rush the passer at times so it's pretty interesting that uh you know it is you know so good the run defense grade and coverage grades are still good still very good uh you'll definitely take that as a linebacker so you know that's kind of what we thought of him I thought he'd be great though and you know, I, you know we'll get into it a little bit more in the film but I definitely feel like uh the splash plays and his sort of home run hitting ability maybe meant that he was a little better than perhaps some of these grades would indicate. But now we go over to his PFF grades from 2022, and it's, I'm not going to say it's a disaster, but it's certainly not great. So he had over a thousand snaps as a rookie, so he played a good chunk, uh, but a 48.1 grade. I mean, that alone, you see that and you're like, why aren't you saying this is a disaster? That's a bad Great. That's not good. Well, a couple things. For one, as we all know, he is a rookie. It's going to take some time to develop. That stuff goes without saying. But uh, the other thing is, you look at his run defense grade, that's a 69.0. That's a good run defense grade. And the pass rush grade of 64.4. Again, these aren't world-beating numbers or anything like that. But for a rookie, you'll certainly take both of those grades. Uh, the issue was tackling, which tackling, that that's just, in the NFL level, you're going to have some years where you have bad tackling grades and good tackling grades that the does kind of tend to be pretty fluky, not to say it's entirely fluky, but just there's a lot of fluctuation there. But the coverage grade of 32.4, that's really why his overall grade went down. And again, it was very much, uh, you know, if you look at his game in and game out uh, numbers, it's a lot more fluky than that. There's a lot of good games, and a lot of bad games, which to me shows that he could show some promise uh, in future years, and maybe he just needs to get a bit more consistent. But let's watch some college tape. Let's see, is there potentially, is it possible we gave him maybe more credit uh, for some of these plays uh, at the college level that were sort of his highlights in college than he deserved? Like something like this, he's you know, in zone coverage. You see where he is on the screen. There's a player who's going to be cutting just underneath him. And as you see, he really just jumps the route, and uh, I can't show the whole play or it'll get copyright claimed, but he's going to en end up getting a touchdown on this play, gets the pick six. That's a really good play, although those opportunities don't quite arise as much at the NFL level as they do in the college level. So is it possible that maybe we paid too much attention to these types of splash plays? Honestly, I just don't think so. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I totally could be wrong, but I kind of feel like, no, this is stuff that deserves attention and these are good plays and they work out at the NFL level I kind of view it uh in a different way I mean I do agree that these don't happen at the NFL level as much that's just completely true but I just view it as in you know these types of plays are going to still happen to some degree and I think that he even showed at the NFL level when those plays when those opportunities arose he was able to make the most of them and in some ways they actually matter more when you can do that because it doesn't happen as much at the NFL level as it does at the college level Again, you could argue there's stuff like this where he's going to be uh, unblocked at the line. Uh, so that's the way this play is designed to work. It's going to be a run to the offense's left. And, you know, uh, a lot of times 
uh, when you're running to the offense's left, you leave players who are on the right side of the field unblocked. That, you know, can't block everybody, right? So it makes sense. Hey, your running back will hopefully accelerate quickly, get to the other side of the field. And so to some degree, this is almost just going to be a foot race for Devin Lloyd and the running back who he's going to be trying to chase down here. And as you see, watch how when this play begins. Okay, you see at this point, now you can really see how this play could work. You can, you know, one thing that could help potentially for Lloyd is if the blocking is not very good, if the running back has to slow down. But that's not really the case. This is pretty well blocked further down the field. So it's simply going to be can Lloyd run, you know, win this foot race? And as you see, that answer is yes, he is able to do so. And again, there's two ways you could take this. You could look at this and say, okay, well, that worked at the NFL at the college level, but now running backs are faster. It doesn't work out quite as well at the NFL level. You could say that for sure, or you could go the other way and you could say, well, no, he has the physical tools and it does work. And again, at the at the NFL level, his run defense was still solid. So personally, I think this is still a positive play. It's it's I want to give both sides of the argument. So this is maybe something you if you are someone who believes Lloyd isn't going to be successful in the NFL level, this is something you that's an argument you can make, but I would not agree with that argument. And finally, I think about something like this. This is a very simple play. It's just going to be a screen pass to the offenses uh right, so towards the top of the screen. Devin Lloyd, uh, you know is intentionally going to be unblocked on this play because you're trying to block guys further down the field. So hopefully he runs in towards the quarterback and he's completely out of the play. There's very little Devin Lloyd should be able to do on this play. But instead, watch him reach out, knock the ball up, and get the interception on that play. That's an incredible play. So when I go back and watch his college tape... I am still just as impressed with his college tape. Yes, it's a one-year wonder type situation, but he was incredible in that one year, and he was consistently good. It wasn't just like he made some splash plays but had some issues as well. No, he was consistently good but also was able to make the splash plays when the opportunity presented itself, and while he hasn't quite been that guy at the NFL level yet, to me, I actually think this is a little bit simple. I think that for someone like Devin Lloyd or just linebackers in general, a lot of times the coverage is just something that takes some time to learn. I mean, you think about just the difference in the concepts that guys at the college level and at the NFL level run and how much more complex it is. It really is going from checkers to chess. So like, yeah, you're going to get confused when it's your you know first time doing it. When you've only played in 19 total NFL games, you only played a thousand snaps. Uh, that sounds like a good amount. He did get a good amount of playing time. And I thought that he showed some flashes. Again, it was weird where it almost felt like some of his better games were earlier on in the season. And then he had some issues, but that also kind of makes some sense, right? Uh, if you're, you know, uh, playing a much more complex version of the sport you've been playing all your life, well, yeah, it's not necessarily going to be like you struggle and then there's a gradual increase every single game. No, it's going to be certain concepts that surprise you that you haven't seen before in game seven, but maybe you didn't have those in game three. So that's why you were better in game three than game seven. It actually makes sense to me. So will Lloyd be a successful linebacker? I'd argue he there already is plenty of value in a Devin Lloyd. And I do think that, you know, I would bet on him fixing the issues, but it doesn't always happen. Sometimes guys have issues and never get better. So we'll see what happens with him. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.